Investorideas.com podcast. Good afternoon and welcome to another Investorideas.com podcast, following cannabis news, stocks to watch, as well as insights from thought leaders and experts. Today's podcast features an interview with Jacob Levin and Andrew Duffy, the co-founders of Best and Grow, where we discuss the MJ Biz Conference 2018, as well as their company, Best and Grow. Okay, so I'm here with Andrew Duffy and Jake Levin, who are the co-founders of Best in Grow. Can you guys tell me a little bit, for people who are unfamiliar with your company, uh, maybe just a little bit about you guys and how you guys got started? Absolutely. Uh, so I guess I'll start with us, how we got started. Um, Jake and I have been friends since college. Uh, we graduated from Harvard in 2016, and after a year of working in finance, we couldn't really take it anymore, so we decided uh, to drive a car out to Colorado, ran out of gas around Boulder, uh, ended up meeting the Canopy Boulder uh, Accelerator Managing Directors, and kind of the rest is history from there. We started up a platform called Best and Grow, which is uh, an operations tool and team management platform for dispensaries, as well as a direct marketing tool and data analytics platform for uh, cannabis brands. Um, we really like to think that we're connecting the industry and bringing the most valuable data uh, that any of those parties needs to them immediately. So obviously you guys are here at this conference like everybody else. What are you looking to gain from being here and what's the big agenda? Yeah, sure. Um, Canvas is such an exciting space to be in right now and we were really encouraged kind of walking the floor here and seeing that there's really nothing out there like best and grow of what we're trying to accomplish. In cannabis and in cannabis dispensaries across the country, about 90% of the time consumers purchase whatever the bud tender recommends to them. Um, so almost unlike any other retail environment, a gap or a liquor store or a grocery store, that's a place where consumers can go and kind of peruse the aisles and pick up items and read the label um, and decide if they want to buy it. But in cannabis, uh, there's a person, the bud tender, that stands between the products and the consumer um, and, and the brands and the managers of dispensaries really rely on that bud tender to adequately represent the products and the effects and the brand story. Uh, and that's what we really built our platform around. Our platform allows the dispensary operator as well as the brands who make those products the ability to harness that influence, better understand it, and create products that is going to fly off the shelves because the people representing the, the industry on the front lines just love selling it. Um, so to answer your question here in, in, in Vegas, uh, we're really looking for more partners to integrate with uh, other software providers to kind of add to our single sign-on solution, as well as dispensary operators and brand operators who are, who are interested in um, you know, who are standing out and adopting one of the most exciting solutions in this space. So obviously, data for training, for knowledge for these dispensaries and all these operators is a huge element for them. You mentioned how people are, 90% is being bought through the bud tender or whoever's selling that product in the store. How much gaps in knowledge or data or logistics and legislation do these people have and how much are you finding that your company is helping them? Sure. So I think the most important knowledge gap to address there is with bud tenders. So bud tenders are people who are incredibly passionate about cannabis broadly, um, but they're expected to take on a pretty daunting and, and one might say impossible task, uh, which is to understand and be able to effectively recommend the hundreds of products in dispensaries available to them. Um, so cannabis is a massively differentiated market. There are tons of different products that all do different things, that have different brands, have different target audiences. Um, and bud tenders can't really be expected to know all that. So our tool helps to address that gap in product knowledge, which can be a big problem for ensuring consistent and high quality customer experiences. Um, but it also helps that bud tender through the interface that they're already using to understand products and, and review products. Uh, we're actually giving them an interface where they can understand compliance and make sure that all of their actions in the dispensary are totally compliant. Um, so we provide checklists, we provide compliance information, we partner with compliance consultants to push updates to the bud tenders at all times to ensure that no dispensary is ever brought down by an innocent mistake from a bud tender. Um, this Colorado dispensary chain, Sweetleaf, was recently uh, shut down and given a pretty heavy fine uh, because of a simple mistake uh, from a bud tender that could have been prevented with a better system. So I know you guys are almost exclusively based in Colorado right now? Um, so yeah, our, our most of our market share is in Colorado right now. Um, we have a couple of pilot programs in other states that we're currently testing out. 
um, that states like Colorado, or sorry, California, Massachusetts, uh, Nevada, Oklahoma, um, and we're using those uh, to test out and ensure that our compliance frameworks and all of the different product attributes that we provide that differ on a state by state basis uh, are working completely before we launch fully in those states. But um, we're pretty pretty ready and able to scale into those states as soon as we have that proof of concept for ourselves. Yeah, it's interesting to note that different states kind of have different perceptions and concepts for what this butt tender role should be and can be. In Colorado, it's really just a retail employee, um, you know, like not just a retail employee, a pretty influential one, um, but they are no different from working in a Gap or any sort of other retail environment. Whereas in Pennsylvania, uh, a registered nurse or pharmacist has to be in every dispensary. Um, and a lot of these states don't really use the term bud tender. They kind of felt that it was uh, not really elevated enough or, or did not really do justice to the position. Um, so they kind of think of them as a little bit more of an uh, you know, informed and prescriptive type role where they are actually advising medicinal users and, and navigating which products are going to be right for their conditions. Well, I think there's actually a pretty interesting dichotomy there between uh, operators as well. A lot of operators think about bud tenders as obstacles, as things that they have to overcome, either a dispensary operator who sees them as a risk to their business or a brand operator who sees them as a wall between the brand and the customer that they're trying to speak to. Um, but we really like to think of bud tenders as potential advocates, people who, uh, when they're given the right tools and the right incentives, can be massive, massively beneficial to your business or your brand. Do you find that there's any obstacles or difficulties in providing any of these, inf or providing this information to any of these companies in that some experts or maybe some information people guard and that it's sort of their <laughs> trade secret, something they don't want out? Is it hard to obtain a lot of the information that you're using to help provide this training and compliance sort of basis? So we really provide the platform uh, for those things to happen within an organization, uh, kind of a, a, a space for a manager and their team, whether that's one location or 15 plus, uh, to have a hyper secure um, environment for them to discuss everything relevant to their business. So that is definitely, in such a highly regulated environment, it really is top of mind for a lot of these operators on how do they stay out of the, the bullseye of you know, someone who's going to come and shut them down. Uh, and, and we really see our platform as a tool that mitigates any of that risk in the sense that it gives them a easy, seamless way to disseminate any new updates or information. So the MED in Colorado is constantly coming out with new regulations that bud tenders and anyone who works in dispensaries need to follow and make sure they need to follow to the letter of the law because any violation of those can not just get a bud tender in trouble, it's going to get the entire store and an entire chain shut down. And it happens um, frequently, and it you know will we'll continue to do so as we exist in this regulatory environment. Um, so best to grow and, and our ability to give manager peace of mind that when they send a note to every employee that they need to stop referencing CBD to any pregnant women um, because that is a mandate that the you know the state recently came out with uh, that that they're going to get metrics back on who has agreed to that who has acknowledged it um, and any any violation is going to then fall on the employee rather than the organization because they are a little bit more um, defended. So did you guys say your platform gives a pretty significant advantage to the companies who are actually utilizing? It? Yeah, definitely. Um, and this is an environment where. The company is particularly in the Colorado market, which is one of the oldest and most professionalized in the U.S. Uh, it's a place where consolidation is rampant. So large dispensary chains are buying out mom and pops that can't survive as downward wholesale price pressure reduces their margins. Um, so that means that businesses in Colorado see a danger of their business either failing or being subsumed by other large companies that are kind of gobbling them up. Um, so they want to optimize, they need to optimize, and this is exactly the type of platform that can help them get a step ahead of the competition, not only locally, but also uh, more broadly within their entire state. So do you guys find that you have a pretty aggressive demand for a company like yours from all those dispensaries and from all those actual uh, companies? 
Yeah, it takes a lot of like training and education on our part about how optimizing your talent um, and keeping all of your workforce engaged really does affect the business's bottom line because the connection between you know a daily kudos to whoever had the highest average ticket price really does over the course of one to three months um, you know drive everyone's sales up and having a place where bud tenders and any employee can give their thoughts on how the business is being run and, and provide feedback really does make employees stick around a lot longer because they feel like they have a seat at the table and they're being heard. And what is it, about $3,000 it takes to hire a new retail employee in cannabis um, just in the training and the onboarding cost. Uh, so if there's one employee that sticks around another couple months longer than they would have because Best & Grow provided that kind of team culture and engagement that they um, that they valued, uh, the platform immediately pays for itself. Yeah, and I think it's it's extremely popular amongst um, dispensaries that are growth-minded, dispensaries that really want to take their organization to the next level, be some of the pioneers, kind of the leading edge of their industry, particularly in their area, uh, because that can mean massive things for a dispensary's brand in particular, uh, making sure that people in your area think of you as a leading high quality dispensary, that, that type of brand can last for decades. Perfect. So obviously looking into the future a little bit here, or talking a little bit speculative, what are you guys' big plans over the next year, or what are you looking to accomplish? And as far as internationally, are you guys looking at expanding not only in the States, but possibly into the Canadian market or into other countries that are going to be having these options soon enough? Yeah, definitely. So uh, our big goals over the next 12 months are uh, expansion throughout the Colorado market, increasing our market footprint there, um, but then also launching into new states. Uh, so we're definitely looking to launch um, not only bi-coastally into California as well as a lot of the kind of underserved East Coast states, um, but also into the Pacific Northwest and into some of the Midwest states that are coming online now as well. Um, so we have big, aggressive expansion goals. So if anyone wants to find out more information about you guys, where would they go to get that information? What's the best way to sort of get contact with us? Sure. We're online at bestingrow.io. Um, and yeah, we're, we're super excited to be working with folks um, in Colorado, in the U.S., in Canada, um, to really get our product into the hands of the people who, who need it most because it really does significantly affect how these dispensaries are being run and the feedback that we've gotten is really tremendous uh, so we're offering a three month free trial for anyone interested um, just feel free to reach out to us through the website or email awesome well it's great talking to you guys and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference here. yeah thank you thanks for having us that's all for today's podcast podcast is now a certified word trademark on the blockchain through Cognate Incorporated CM certification InvestorIdeas.com podcasts are also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and TuneIn. If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor of this podcast, please contact InvestorIdeas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website, and this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investments involve risk and possible loss of investment. Investor Ideas does not condone the use of cannabis except where permissible by law. Our site does not possess, distribute, or sell cannabis products.